and welcome back to another one. So this video is all about the subframe and getting it back to bare metal and giving it a nice new paint job. I am also going to try and refurbish as many of the ancillary parts that I took off in the last video as possible. That includes things like the, the upper control arm, the hub, uh, the brake calipers, the crash bungs, even things like the the rear mounts, which I thought there was a rubber bushing or some sort of bushing in here, and it isn't on this, it's solid metal. So I think this will clean up quite nicely. Um, even things like the bolts, I'm gonna try and refurbish as many of those as possible where they're in a good, good enough state to do so. But before I do anything else, on the subframe, I need to get out two of the studs um, from the bolts that I broke on the last video. I've got one here by the anti-roll bar and an even bigger one down there by the front. So, wish me luck. Just a quick one before I get started on the stud removal. I am going to be using a variety of different discs and attachments to try and um, get the metal uh, back to bare metal and get rid of the rust. So I've got drill attachments including like preparation wheels and um, these sorts of things. Grinding discs, uh, flap discs, cup attachments. I will include links to all these in the description below but I will be trying a bit later in turn just to see what kind of effect they have on the surface because I don't want to scratch too much into the metal and remove too much of that um, but I do want them to be effective. I can't say I've ever attempted to remove a stud uh, like this before and you see loads of YouTube videos on it so um, this is a novice having a go. Now one of the comments from um, the last video, thank you very much by the way, um, was to stop using WD-40 for what I was using it for to release parts and start and use plus gas. Now it says fast release dismantling lubricant um, and it does say it's even for the home handyman. That could be me. Um, and it does say just simply spray a few drops of plus gas onto the seized or corroded part um, and it takes a few seconds. Now I am going to give it the benefit of the doubt and I will leave it on there for a little while longer than that. Following that I'm going to use um, a punch and hammer to try and work it around and if I'm not getting any joy with that I've got some left left-handed um, drill bits so that as I'm drilling into the center of the stud there's a chance that it could unwind it on like a regular drill bit which might tighten it and then I've got some screw extractors which I haven't got much faith in at all. Failing all of that it's heat and I did see one video um, that uses a, a Torx bit um, once you've drilled the hole in the stud tap in a bit of a Torx bit and that works wonders so hopefully we don't get that far but we'll see. So first thing I'm going to do is give it a bit of a clean up uh, with this drill, cheap drill, drill attachment. So this is the plus gas. You know, a bit of a oop, squirt. I'll squirt it on the back as well. Oh, that's pongy. I feel like I'm cheating a bit by going at it now, but it did say a few seconds. Now I really don't, because it's nice and flat, I really don't want to bugger it all up, so I'm going to stop there with that one. And I shall attempt to drill it out. Now I am going to put a center punch in the center, funnily enough, as best as possible. So I am going to attempt to drill it out. Now, these, are, uh, th these aren't our expensive uh, set of left-handed drill bits at all. Sealy brand, link in the description. So I'll start off as small as the set of, as I've got. So I'm going to try the next size drill bit up and keep it slow. Right, 
start, because the left-hander drill bit's set, the only go down to a 3.2. I'm going to start it off with a, a regular HSS drill bit. And this is a 2.5, just to see if we can't get a bit of a pilot hole. Oh, so that's gone all the way through. So now I will try one of the larger drill bits that are left-handed, just to see if it doesn't uh, help it out a bit. Now this set of screw extractors is, isn't a new set, and I don't think it's the best quality either. So I am gonna try and, well, to be honest, I'll work my way up the sizes. I don't think a small size is gonna help. I wanna try and get the biggest one I can in. Hey. So I'm going to try a bigger size because I really don't want to snap this off. So I'm going to try a bigger size. See if we can't get that started. Now that's not a good sound, I do not think. It's hard to tell whether or not that's the stud working its way free or the screw extractor. Snapping. I suspect it was the latter. No, the threads are still okay. Right. Heat it is. Right, so now that it's had time to cool down, I'm going to give the uh, the screw extractor another go. No, I really don't want to push my luck. I don't know what that sound is. But I really don't want to snap this off. And it doesn't look like it's budging at all. So one thing I really didn't want to have to try was the the Torx option. Now I've seen people tap a Torx bit into there and it brings it out. So I'm going to give this a go. And just for reference, the last drill bit I sent through it was a 4.8 millimeter. And this is a T30 Torx, just in case you ever attempt this yourself. Now I am under no illusion that I've probably just lost that Torx socket and it may snap off in there, but I am running out of options. Nope. So 
So what I think I'll do, I'll keep soaking that in plus gas and then I'll come back to it with the screw extractor. And for now, I'm gonna move on to the other bolt. So the last time on the other bolt, I drilled it out and then I put heat on it. And I think the way this works, in freeing up these sorts of things and breaking the rust away, is that you heat these up and they have nowhere to expand, so they sort of break their bond, if you like. Um, now, if I drill the hole in it like I did on the other one, then it's gonna expand, it has somewhere to expand inward. So that could be why heat wasn't so effective. I also haven't got a lot of heat. I've not got oxyacetylene or anything like that. So that could also have been an issue. So I'm not gonna drill this one out first. I'll clean it up and then put the heat on it. So now this is had time to cool. I am going to do the same process as before. So I'm gonna start with the punch try and find somewhere to work it around really <laughs> please i am going to keep spraying this as well with plus gas for what it's worth yeah so i don't want to mash mash this up so i'm going to be drilling it out Right, I'm going to leave these bolts soaking in plus gas and keep spraying them, keep spraying them, keep spraying them and then I'll come back to them probably tomorrow just to make sure I've given them the benefit of the doubt. If that doesn't work um, then I'll drill them out and I'll probably replace the captive nuts um, by welding them in. Um, fingers crossed I don't have to do that, chances are I am going to have to do that. Now, so I'm just going to get on and uh, clean up the rest of the subframe, really. So because I value my sensors, I am going to be using a respirator, hearing protection and eyewear as well. Um, let's go with it. a messy job um, so the preparation wheel on the grinder did a really good job of doing all the flat surfaces um, and I could get it in some nooks and crannies but not all of them so I've been using a drill attachment a wire brush to get in the hard to reach places uh, this hasn't cleaned it up that well but it has got off the flaky bits of rust so that's the main thing I'm now going to give it a good degreasing get it all cleaned up um, and then I'm going to give it a bit of a, a rust treatment Right, to do this one, nothing fancy. Some no-nonsense heavy-duty degreaser from my local screw fix. Surprisingly works well on uh, engine parts. Just some very cheap brushes and a cheap sprayer.
Right, so with that cleaned up, I'm gonna leave this to dry overnight and then I'll come back tomorrow and then give it some rust treatment. Now that the whole subframe is dry, there are a few places around the subframe that I've not been able to get into with the angle grinder attachment or any other attachment that I've got. So what I'm gonna do is, not just in those places, but across the whole subframe, I'm gonna treat it with this. It's a product by Hammerite called Crust, and it chemically alters rust into something else. Um, it says a stable surface, and then you can, after about three hours, it's dry, and then you can put any, pretty much any top coat you want on top of that. So what should happen is when you paint over it, if it comes into contact with rust, it should turn a bluish purpley color, and then after that, uh, dry black. Um, so yeah. So now that the rust treatment has properly dried, I'm gonna go on and give it a, a priming coat. Now I'm gonna start with an etch primer. This is going to, it's got acid in it or it's, it's acid based. So that's gonna bite into whatever you're spraying it onto and, and really dig into the, um, the surface, which is gonna make it a really good undercoat. I'm then gonna give it a couple of coats of um, high build primer. Um, I have in the past used a high coat paints, spray paints, uh, and while they're okay, I've been using some Autotech ones just recently, and I do find these much better to work with. The fan on them is much broader, and so they cover really, really easily, and they dry really, really fast as well. So I'm gonna use the etch primer first. Once I've sprayed the whole thing, I'm gonna leave it to harden for at least 24 hours, and then I'll come back and do a couple more coats of the high build primer. Sit rep. So I've left it several days now. Um, been spraying it with plus gas every day. And I've even used hydraulic fluid on these and let that soak in. And it isn't budging it. I tried it again with the screw extractor and it isn't budging it. I will snap the screw extractor off if I really go too much at it. I've tried it with more heat as well. That's not making a difference. So what I'm gonna try and do is drill out, completely drill out uh, the stud and see if the threads remain intact in the nut. If not, then I'm just gonna replace the nuts. So there are still threads in there. This is the original bolt I took out. I think that'll be fine. Just need to do the other one now. So I'm doing the same thing as before. I'm gonna drill it out. And hopefully I gotta get as lucky as the last one. Now in here, 
there's a lot of the um, the previous bolts still stuck in the thread so I'm not sure this one's salvageable so that's going to have to come out so to get this nut out I'm going to cut it out but I can't use an angle grinder because I'm going to start and catch uh, bits of metal around it so what I am going to attempt to do instead is use a it's like a multi-tool with a bit of a grinding slash cut-off wheel on there so I should be able to get that in So I'm even struggling to get in with the uh, the multi-tool and it's not really it's not really cutting into it. it's not really the proper disc for it so I'm going to try the angle grinder if I do nick this it's no big deal it doesn't really serve any great purpose other than for a bit of strength I suppose but... So now I'm going to put this high tensile nut in there and weld it in. Now, unfortunately, I haven't got a MIG welder or anything like that. It's a really old arc welder, but it should get the job done. Right, so with most of the subframe uh, got a couple of coats of primer on it, I'm now on to painting it with its top coat, if you like. Now, I'll probably get quite a few comments around the, the type of cop, uh, top coat I should have used, but I'm going with uh, Hammerite. So this is uh, it's direct to rust metal paint, so you can paint straight onto a rusty surface. It loves that sort of thing, doesn't require any preparation. Now on this, there is a bit of preparation, there's well, quite a bit of preparation. So I'm going to put one coat of this on, let it dry, and then I'm going to put a, a second coat on and probably lacquer it as well. Um, this stuff, I've got good experience of this stuff, not on subframes, but on metal work outside, and it tends to last for me. So this is more of an experiment than anything else. And as time goes on, I'll continue to monitor the subframe and we'll see whether or not it, uh, it is actually any good. So that's another job done. I've literally just finished putting on a, a lacquer, a bit of a clear coat. It didn't really need it, and if I was to do it all over again, I probably wouldn't bother with a clear coat, um, as the hammerite is good enough all on its own. And even says on the tin, the hammerite tin, don't use anything on top of it, doesn't need it. So what have we done then? So we've ground it back to bare metal, got rid of as much rust as humanly possible, um, gave it a rust treatment, gave it some etch primer, a couple of layers uh, of high build primer on top of that and then it's had two layers of hammerite top and underneath and then a clear coat so that should have if nothing else have extended its life a little bit more a um, couple of things I ran into that really delayed this project 
Um, removing the, the snapped off bolts, they were a nightmare. Um, when I cut one of the, the nuts out, I didn't film it, but um, when I welded the new nut back in, I got some weld inside the nut, so that one had to come back out and put another one back in, so that was a pain. Um, and also the, this, the drying time between layers. Ideally, you need to leave them 24 hours, that's what it's saying on the tin, to properly dry. Um, the Hammerite I was really impressed with. I had a used tin of about three quarters and I've probably got a quarter of it left, so I've used only half a tin on two, uh, two coats, top and bottom. Um, and it's got, it goes on really, really thick. It's almost like a tar. So I've, I have confidence in that. Um, the finish isn't brilliant. There are brush strokes here and there, um, but this, uh, it wasn't for aesthetics. It's hopefully gonna last a lot longer. So in the next video, I'm gonna be refurbing all the bits that I can and then putting them back on. Um, and I'll also be having another giveaway. So do look out for that in the next video and I'll, uh, I'll see you then.